So let me tell you my problem with this bike, why I never bought one. Short chainstay, mullet only option. Now I've successfully ran this bike as a full 29 inch wheel by removing this little mud guard. To put this in perspective, there's a good chance you are a faster rider than me with this bike having mullet wheels. But with the full 29 inch setup, basically the rear suspension is slowed down. Making it more predictable and the bike basically has more carry through speed and more rollover. Reading through all the technical jargon, it does void your warranty by putting 29 inch wheel on the rear on this bike and Specialized doesn't advise it. I'm gonna leave this mud guard in place, move the flip chip and see what tires fit. So I have some information for you. The Gen 2 Levo doesn't even have this mud guard. So taking it out, it's probably not a good idea, but the old one didn't even have it. So it definitely comes in the high setting, the forward position from the factory. Cause I know for a fact, this bike has never been touched. That was a little sketchy of a sound. So this is the flip chip on the Specialized Levo. So effectively you get that much longer of a chainstay. So let's measure that. So you get about 12 millimeters of chainstay lengthening by changing the flip chip on the Specialized Levo. That horrible cracking noise you heard when I took it apart is basically all the Loctite breaking. So if you really wanna take care of your bike, we've gotta clean up that Loctite. So what you need to do is get a top and die and cut, you could do this with a wire brush or a wire wheel, but we need to cut all that Loctite off the thread. So I'm basically a mechanic, so anything that saves time, you could use like a wire brush or wire wheel. By running the bolt through the tap, the six by 1.0, we basically have some brand new threads. Same goes for this guy, we're gonna need a Anytime you feel resistance, when you're turning a bolt with an impact gun or any type of assisted device, you need to stop and do it by hand. So there is quite a bit of resistance because there's so much Loctite that are being cut off these threads. All this extra Loctite, if you just put that back in the bike, you'd effectively have an inaccurate torque setting when you tighten it down. The flip chip is pretty cool. Basically, you take the seat stay and yank it backwards. Make sure everything is lined up perfect. So if you really care about your bike, invest in some orange Loctite. This stuff is super high strength and doesn't leave that residue that you have to clean off later. To properly do all the fitment testing on this bike, I gotta pull the shock out. So if you own this bike, definitely invest in a ball head Allen socket because taking the shock out of this bike isn't fun. Anytime you're going outside of the parameters recommended from the manufacturer, it's important to do your own due diligence. So I'm gonna bolt this Suntour Voro shock into the bike and do a whole bunch of different tests without the spring on there. So first tire up is an aggressor and it doesn't fit inside the bike. That's because this bike has this bougie skid plate that kind of hugs around the back of the motor. I am a massive fan of those skid plates because you can basically bash into rock gardens with confidence, but for this test, it's gotta come off. So basically getting that skid plate removed, first test, first wheel on test is a Maxxis 2.5 inch aggressor. Not a super aggressive tire but it does have plenty of fitment inside the bike. So this is a super important step anytime you're going outside of the manufacturer's recommendations. What you need to do is slam that shock as hard as you can into the bump stop and make sure everything clears because one shock might have like 67 millimeters of stroke and one might have 65. There is plenty of room in this bike with a Maxxis Aggressor, but I don't think many people want to ride a Maxxis Aggressor on their heavy duty enduro bike. So I'm going to bolt in a DHR2 on a 30 millimeter wide internal rim. With the 2.5 inch DHR2 on the 30 millimeter rim, things do get a little bit tight in the rear end here. So I gotta run through all the same tests I did on the aggressor tire. All clear with the suspension test, so I bolted in the coil. For an extra layer of protection, I'm running a 230 by 57.5 shock. That little green clip on there is a DVO travel reducer that works on this Suntour Boro. 
you could save all this headache here guys and just buy a 29 inch coil friendly bike at Jensen for like five grand that's ready to shred. So I was wrong in the first video. All you have to do is move this flip chip to the high setting and basically you can get any 2.5 inch Max's tire in this bike. Every tire is a little bit different. So here she is in her final form, the Gen 3 Levo, the most capable Gen 3 ever with the Cascade Link, the Big Shock, a 170 millimeter Zeb. But there's one thing I forgot to tell you about. So we just raised the bottom bracket or the rear up 20 inches or 20 centimeters. So what you're gonna end up with is a 365 bottom bracket and the head angle is gonna go to 65 degrees. So don't dork out over suspension numbers or geometry numbers. You need to go ride it and see how it's gonna go. With a 365 bottom bracket, it may seem ridiculous, but my favorite bike of all time had a 365 bottom bracket, so I think I know how this is going to go. The Levo's an awesome bike, even with the mullet wheels. But first test run, about 5 seconds in, with the full 29 inch setup, this bike is sailing through the terrain. I personally think it's going substantially faster, but I deleted Strava in the last six months because I realized it looks like a math problem. Remember this is final form Levo and it has got a super progressive rear end. Basically overshoot a jump, no problem. So the Cascade Link, this fancy little component here, raises the progression level up to like 10% from factory, allowing it, making it more coil friendly. So if you're a coil shock nut, this thing is so the Cascade Link, it's not overly progressive and it's not underly progressive like the stock bike. So I really do enjoy it when I'm running a coil shock. I haven't tested this with an air shock, but man, it is pretty darn impressive in the rear end, especially considering that larger wheel in the rear. There's no arguing that a full 29 inch bike is gonna be superior when it comes to that standard cross country trail riding. Like are cross country racers riding mullet bikes? No. This is my favorite part about putting larger wheels on a bicycle. You end up with a 365 millimeter bottom bracket, essentially eliminating all in any pedal strikes without spending $400 on the set of cranks. Do you like to ride like this? Do you have a size 12 feet? Well, you're never gonna pedal strike with a 365 bottom bracket and your motor is a little bit safer because it's higher off the ground. There is definitely a fine line between too tall and too short of a bottom bracket, but I can tell you if you try a 365 bottom bracket and never pedal strike for two weeks, you're gonna love it. It may be a little bit compromised when it comes to like blue trails and you're trying to rail the bike over and yes, I suck, sure, whatever, but it's all about having fun, right? post ride inspection of the final form Gen 3 Levo. Nothing to report on this bike, it's clear for takeoff with that full 29 inch wheel. Now this bike has the stock SRAM guides or the equivalent of SRAM guides in 2024. And they're pretty impressive, they actually stopped the bike. The lever feels a little bit cheap, but man, this bike is riding incredible. A couple days later, with some spare time, I bolted in the clip-in pedals, a custom handlebar, and some new grips. Got it all custom, packed a bunch of bags up to go for a massive alpine ride, walked outside, and my car was stolen. Welcome to woke West Coast America, baby. This is what you get, tents and stolen cars. So this is actually a blessing in disguise, because I had to go back to the test track with the clip-in pedals and basically compare how it rode clipped-in versus not clipped-in. And there's actually a really good insight here for all bikes on the market. Viewers, subscribers, mostly subscribers, most of my videos are filmed on a one mile section of trail and it's like a light blue. It's kind of like above green, but it's a light blue. So I like to make videos here on the one mile section of trail because I can compare it to other products I've rode before. If I say something sucks, people get mad and just because I have a big enough set of balls to say something sucks and not beat around the bush. So I'm basically clipped in and yesterday I was on flat pedals. My position, my riding style is definitely more business oriented and I was having more fun on flats. So I was filming the RockShock Vivid Coil video as a mullet on this bike 
maybe a week and a half ago. And I want you to watch the rear wheel. So this is the mullet Levo. Watch how active the rear 27.5 wheel is on big compressions. It is like violently moving. Now I'm gonna replay it with the 29 inch wheel. So the 29 inch wheel is basically calming it down. And that is as close to the scientific test as you can get right here. We're basically on the same bike and the same shoes, pedals, conditions, blah, 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 blah. So there's another valid point here to riding mullet. So coming into the first corner, I suck at riding and I especially suck at cornering. The mullet is probably faster in the corners, but I basically have to pedal through all these sections while when I'm on the 29, I'm basically carrying speed through there. So it's actually a really good thing my car got stolen because the neighbor gave me a forerunner, but actually having to do with this Levo. When I was clipped in on this day, I was definitely felt like I was riding better and faster, but I was thinking about the day before and I was like, I was having more fun on flat pedals. So I think you should ride flats one day and then clips the next and decide which one you had more fun on because that's what biking's all about, having fun, regardless of your ability level. The Imperial ATT Walker Levo in final form. So there's not much difference between being clipped in and not clipped in. So that small chainstay, short chainstay in the rear is actually a blessing because it doesn't require you to clip in. Now when I rode the full power Kinevo 29 and the Kinevo SL, I basically felt like I had to clip in to move those massive bikes around. Going out for a larger ride in the full 29 inch Levo, I was like, I should do some kind of range test here. But realizing it was 45 degrees this day and tomorrow will be 80 degrees, it's not super accurate to measure battery range. And this bike is very young. It only has like 300 miles or so. So the range is actually super excellent. Using only like two bars to climb 1400 feet or 400 meters or so. The trail climbing experience is extraordinaire with their 365 millimeter bottom bracket, zero pedal strikes, and not even thinking about where the pedals are. Amateur riders, people who just want to have fun, this is absolutely excellent. Essentially this type of terrain is what sold me on the 365 bottom bracket. Come into these savage nasty rock gardens and you can just pedal all the way through because it has more rollover and the pedals don't strike. So I threw my cell phone on the ground so you could see how savage it looks from the ground. The Levo is such an excellent jibber and it's not too much compromised with the 29 inch rear wheel because of that short chain state. I was having an absolute fun time with these slow speed jibbing until my camera went KO. Another massive benefit of full 29, you don't have to be super precise with your line choice because that rear wheel will not get stuck in the ruts when you're charging down the mountain. Coming into some blue flow trails, I was able to clear all the jumps because I have all that extra carry through speed. That may not be relevant to you if you're like a super talented rider, but let's go to the garage and debrief on the Levo. There is no arguing a full 29 inch bike with a progressive rear end and the best value, most massive coil shock on the market is an absolute beast in the rock gardens. Now I was thinking about this all day and I'm like, I don't know why I'm obsessed with 29 inch wheels and basically it's because I'm lazy. With the full 29, I'm just kind of like cruising along, able to clear more jumps and it just has this like extra roll over the rock. Now you may be a super talented rider who likes to ride the bike actively and a 29 inch wheel is pretty easy to try it, but you need to try it with an open mind and not nerd out over the numbers. Remember this thing has a 365 bottom bracket, so it's pretty tall, but if you went into it blind and weren't like mentally nerding out on it, you probably wouldn't even notice. The bike also has a 65 degree head angle and personally, I ride all kinds of hacked up bikes and I can't tell the difference between 64 and 65. So I found the same short covings on this third gen Levo with 29 inch wheels that I did on the last one, but you have to click this video here because it's like a 12 minute video. 
And it has to do with somewhere around here on the bike. So click that video there. <laughs> Hope that was helpful. It will avoid your warranty. 